Hey guys, welcome back to another Friday episode. Uh, you may recognise there's a new thumbnail, so it's a bit of a work in progress at the moment. Um, I just wanted to make it just stand out a bit more, really. Have um, instead of like multiple pieces of news on the thumbnail, I just wanted to have one big, uh, sort of like the main bit for the video, and then obviously I'd include in the title maybe what else is in the video as well. Um, so yeah, as you see from the thumbnail, to start off with, it is Fortnite, Fortnite being removed from the App Store on iOS devices. Um, so that's Apple and on Google and Google like Play Store. Um, just just uh, before I go any further, if you do have an Android, like a Google phone or something like that, um, you can still download the game Fortnite um, via the Epic's own website. Be, um, obviously, Apple devices stop you from doing this, so it is totally banned from Apple phones uh, or tablets. Um, so yeah, so going straight into it, this week Epic added an update to both Apple and Google's version of Fortnite that allowed you to pay for V-Bucks and give the money straight to Epic rather than using the sanctioned system via Apple and Google's transaction. Um, so this is normally, like, I think it's like a 30% they give to Apple and that normally. Um, but they, I believe it was like 9.99. this is in dollars, this is the picture I saw, so it's $9.99 uh, that you'd normally pay uh, which would be like going to Apple and they sort of transaction it. Obviously, it goes off the Epic part of the money, part of the money Apple keeps. And I believe that Epic actually added like a um, price underneath that you can buy, which is actually seven ninety nine, so it's obviously cheaper. Um, so, obviously, everyone would um, obviously go and choose that option. And Apple, I think, would be losing money on that. So, obviously, Apple and Google didn't like it, so they removed it from the App Store, which is kind of understandable. I guess it's kind of cheeky doing it like that, but... Um, I don't know the full uh, requirements that on the App Store and the Google Play Store that obviously encourage or not encourage this sort of behaviour. Um, so on Thursday, Apple officially removed Fortnite from the App Store, leading to Epic filing a lawsuit against Apple due to this. And now Google have done the same with Epic filing a lawsuit against them too. Uh, so Epic have final, uh, so Epic have a lawsuit against Apple and now Google. Um, this is obviously to try and get the game, their game back onto the App Store. So obviously they're losing money because people can't download the game. Um, I mean, if you if you have the game currently, you can still play it. So they're obviously not shutting servers or anything like that. It's just that uh, new players can't download. and that. So it's not a massive loss, but it, it's still something they want sorted because obviously it stops people being able to play their game. Uh, so there's a statement from Google here that reads, the open, the open Android ecosystem lets developers distribute apps through multiple app stores. For game developers, we choose to use the Play Store. We have constant policies that are fair to developers and keep the store safe for users. While Fortnite remains available on Android, we can no longer make it available on Play because it violates our policies. However, we welcome the opportunity to continue our discussions with Epic and bring Fortnite back to Google Play. So it looks like it will be sorted in due course time, really. Um, Obviously, it'll go through the courts and whatever. I don't know what Epic are going to get out of out of it, really. Um, I guess it'll cost quite a lot of money to take up these big companies, the court and such. Um, but it also goes back to, especially with Apple, it goes back to the whole... Um, obviously, Xbox wants to have its xCloud on all mobile devices and tablets and that. So they've, maybe they've been able to do this on Androids, um, but then Apple basically say, no, they don't want it on their devices. Something due to the App Store and how the system works and that. Um, I don't know if this because Apple's already got their own sort of subscription to have its own games that are on the App Store that you can get. Um, I think it's like 99p for like a trial or something. Um, and they just don't want Xbox basically having their games on there because I guess more people will be playing those games rather than Apple's own games and they'll be losing money maybe in that sort of sense. Um, so... Pretty much, they're sort of just being anti-consumer. They don't want to um, increase sort of like the gaming network on their device. They sort of want to keep keep to their own. They don't want to be doing partnerships with like Microsoft and that, um, which is really annoying. Um, since obviously I, I have Apple products, so I can't um, access like X Cloud or iCloud. Sorry, on or is it Cloud? Yeah, um, on on my devices unless I get an Android, which is obviously like another five six hundred pounds. So. I probably won't be paying that. Um, so it's quite it's quite big news. It's quite interesting to see what they sort of get out of it. And hopefully that they sort of find a way to uh, get Apple to sort of just be more open with what they're doing and that. 
and it could quite it could be like quite a big movement in the gaming community and stuff. So it's quite interesting to see um, what can come out of that. Anyway, moving on to our second piece of news, and this this come early in the week, and that's Halo Infinite. It's been delayed till twenty twenty one. So I have an official uh, statement here from 343. It reads, Today I want to share an important Halo Infinite development update with the community. We have made a difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure the team have has adequate time to deliver a Halo experience that meets our vision. The decision to shift our release is the, is the result of multiple factors that have contributed to development challenges, including the ongoing COVID-related impacts affecting us all this year. I want to acknowledge the hard work from our team at 343 Industries who have remained committed to making a great game and finding solutions to development challenges. However, it is not sustainable for the well-being of our team and or the overall success of the game to ship in this holiday. We know this will be a disappointment to many of you and we all share in, the, in that sentiment. The passion and support the community has shown over the years has been incredible and inspiring. We wanted nothing more than to play our game with the community this other day. The extra, extra time will let us finish the critical work necessary to deliver the most ambitious Halo game ever at the quality we know our fans expect. Thank you for your support and understanding. Chris Lee, Studio Head, Halo Infinite. So that was a statement by 343 this week. Um, I don't know if this was... I don't know if it's... Because obviously we had Halo gameplay last month... Uh, like the Xbox Showcase, um, you got a lot of neg negative feedback on social media. That uh, pretty much uh, related to like graphical visuals and stuff. Um, they were very poor. The textures were like Xbox 360 textures. There's actually a um, picture that I'll pull up that you can see like the details back on Halo Reach on the textures on the guns was a lot better than the gun textures on the weapons in Halo Infinite. Uh, that's not really necessary. It's not really it's not really a game you want to show off really for next gen hardware to encourage people to buy it. Um, so it was a really big disappointment. Um, I don't know if they were going to delay it if if they didn't get like the negative feedback. I don't know if they were going to still delay it. So that's quite interesting, really. Um, I know one of the uh, sort of main people at Xbox who helped promote on social media said that the game would actually look a lot better at launch. Um, but I mean, clearly that wasn't the case since it's been delayed. Um, but what it means for Xbox Series X launch, so obviously this is going to be the first Xbox launch since the original Xbox to have a Halo um, available to play. Um, so obviously this is not going to be the case now, so they're actually missing their biggest AAA game, or the biggest AAA game really on Xbox full stop. Um, so now you obviously, you're gonna, if you're going to get your Series X at this holiday, you'll be getting um, no real big uh, AAA games really. Obviously you've got Game Pass, you've got all like the current games now. Um, so you've got like Master Chief Collection stuff. You've all, also got like Sea of Thieves. You've got like Forza Horizon Four, Gears Five. These all games will be getting um, sort of patched with like next gen features and stuff. So you might have uh, increased frame rates, visuals. Uh, I'm sure these games might get like, add a bit of content or something as well, uh, just to keep keep you going. Um, well, you also got Cyberpunk launching in November. Um, that will take advantage of like the new hardware, but it won't have the like enhanced features like the ray tracing stuff. Because obviously, CG Project Red said that was coming next year, um, probably like late next year, I'd say. Um, so that's pretty big, really. I don't. I think that affects sales. Obviously, I was personally gonna buy a Series X, and I probably still will. But I have obviously thought about it. Well, if I'm but if I'm buying it, what am I actually gonna be playing? Because I want to be playing like next gen games. And obviously playing Halo would have been really cool to play at launch, so that's quite that's quite a bit of a bummer, really. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's for a lot of people as well. So you've got the diehard Xbox fans that will obviously be buying it anyway, like like I would if I was a diehard Xbox fan. Um, but I mean, just encouraging sort of like new players like myself and that it's not really something that excites me now. Man, I mean, games that were gonna are gonna launch anyway. You know, I can play on Xbox One on Game Pass on that, so. If there was anything coming out that I wanted to play, um, that I can just play on Xbox One anyway. So that's quite interesting. I'd like to see how that develops more. I'd, I'd be interested to see if PlayStation announced anything. It's just that was just sort of like um, saying their game's still coming. It's, it's still in development. 
it'll hit launch. Um, so obviously it's possible that uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales could be delayed. So obviously I wouldn't say it's quite as long as a big game as Halo, but uh, with the current climate and that that's happening, um, it's quite easily that could be delayed as well. So we have to keep an eye on that. Um, so yeah, moving on with that, we have... So this weekend, probably around about Sunday, I'm going to be posting a Marvel Avengers beta impressions video that I said I was going to do. Um, so obviously I've been playing the beta so far. Um, I've enjoyed bits of it and some bits, obviously I'll get into in the video, I've not enjoyed. Um, nonetheless, I'll still be picking it up and actually reviewing it properly. Um, but just to clarify, the open beta is now available on PlayStation 4. So if you've got a PlayStation 4, you can obviously just go straight into the PlayStation Store, go to the free-to-play section, and it'll just be under there. And you can download that. It's about 30 gigabytes. Um, it doesn't seem like you need to, you need to be on online, online either. Obviously, you need online to download the game, but you can actually play it offline, which is nice. Um, and it's got like five hours worth of content. So it's got quite a bit for a beta, which is cool. Get a good test, taste for the game. Um, and for those who pre-ordered it on Xbox and Steam, you'll be able to play as well. Uh, so that's good. So all the consoles and that and platforms will be able to jump in, experience what the game's about and stuff. Um, and obviously next week you open beta for Xbox and PC players as well. So um, you've got that to look forward to if you can't play it this weekend. Uh, so finally, moving on to the deals of the week. So this week I picked out Doom Eternal, which is £27.48 on the PlayStation Store. Uh, so that's obviously in pounds for like UK. Um, that's the cheapest I've seen Doom Eternal for currently. Um, it's obviously Doom's big game. I think that's a quite a fair price. It's not that old. It was coming about what was it about March time. Um, so that's a good good game, good deal for the week. Um, and I also picked up Remnant from the Ashes, which is free on the Epic Game Store till twenty fifth of August. So obviously that game's packed with content to do. You can obviously play on your own or with friends. Um, and it's just another game that Epic are delivering with this free to like play sort of um, deal that they've been doing every month. Um, I also want to point out as well that I was in a local Tesco store today. Uh, that's obviously in the UK as well. And they were doing Final Fantasy 7 Remake on PlayStation 4 for £32. So that's if that's something you're interested in, obviously hop over to there. Um, it, might be, it might still be in stock. I can't promise it will be because they do have limited... Uh, stock in Tesco's, um, but that's the cheapest I've seen it. So it, it's about uh, what is it about? I can't remember. I played it now. It's about a thirty-hour campaign. It's very long. Um, if you if you're not if you've never played a Final Fantasy game, it's definitely worth checking out. It's a um, third-person. I like it's an RPG, but it's not it's not like a role. It's it's like a role-playing game. I don't feel like I'm role-playing a character because it is like a fixed character. Um, you can't really make your own as such it's sort of their own their own sort of destiny that you sort of follow the path through through the game um but obviously it's final fantasy that's a big franchise and if it's something you want to get into because obviously there will be a second game which will be like the second half of final fantasy 7 because such a long game uh that managed to split into two parts which is crazy um yeah, you can try it out, £32, get a feel for it and that, and obviously you can look forward to the second game. Um, but apart from that, I don't think there is any events this week. I'll just double check. Um, I know, so on the, these are newly announced actually. So on the 18th, which is the Tuesday, you have Baldur's Gate 3 panel from hell. Uh, so that starts at 6. So obviously if you're interested in Baldur's Gate 3, I'm sure they'll be answering questions and stuff. Uh, probably be some new features, new trailer, and that. That's pretty cool. And then on Saturday, the twenty second, we have DC Fandom. Uh, so that starts at six. Uh, so DC Fandom is like basically DC's big uh blowout of all content related DC to DC. So you obviously you'll have like film trailers. I'm sure you'll have ad action figures, models, and such. Um, artwork. You know, you're also gonna have some games as well. So. We've obviously we know we got this Justice League game coming from Rocksteady. Um, we have this Batman, parent Batman game from Montreal. Um, so that'd be quite interesting just to see. Obviously, what games come quite interesting that Justice League game. Um, I don't know how I don't know how that's going to be. Is it going to be a live service game? Is it going to be a free to play game? 
Um, is it going to be this like AAA sort of story story mode sort of campaign? So that'd be really good. And then obviously another Batman game. So we obviously all know how the highly rated Batman games are. They're really fun. Great combat. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the, that week. We've obviously still got another Xbox showcase to come at some point, I believe. Just to, um, obviously you've got to get the prices for the new consoles, the date. Obviously we actually know the date is going to be November. Or the month of the release in November that was announced this week. Um, and obviously I've seen rumours of November the 6th. Because apparently it's a bit of box art that's been leaked for November the 6th. Um, I believe I actually said it was, uh, so you get like one year warranty and the warranty runs out on November the 5th. So there was this sort of, sort of hint in that it could be November the 6th, which of course is a Friday, which would make perfect sense. Um, so obviously we'll keep an eye on that as well. And there is meant to be a rumoured state of play happening. Um, I did see a rumoured date of the 20th. I don't believe it's going to be the 20th. I think that's a bit too early from the previous state of play we had, which was last week. Um, but I have seen it towards the end of August to like the start, early part of September. So um, we'll see that. And obviously there'll be more console, uh, console details on like UI, the software, um, price, date, everything we need to know really to pre-order our consoles. Um, so that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Uh, have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.